Can I beat Pokemon Fire Red version with each gym leader's best Pokemon? Of course I can, but that's not the point. This is a tribute to the best Pokemon trainers in Kanto, the gym leaders. Ideally, by playing these games, we're meant to learn from each gym battle and discover new strategies for defeating the Elite Four. So to pay homage to these great trainers, I'm stealing their best Pokemon and taking them on tour. The rules are pretty simple. Rule 1, I can only catch and use the best Pokemon from each gym in a battle. I can use my starter in the very early game, but must phase it out once I find a suitable replacement. I can also catch HM users, but again, I can't use them in battle. Rule 2, I'm not allowed to use items in battle if I'm facing the gym leaders or the Elite Four. And finally, Rule 3, I can't use any cheats or exploits. I will break these rules periodically. Let me know in the comments how many times you think it'll take to beat the Elite Four and at how great a level disadvantage. All right, let's get started. I name myself William, and my I rival, FOOL! I decide to start the challenge with Bulbasaur. This will make Pikachu easier to catch, Brock's gym will be a cakewalk, and I can phase it out for Oddish pretty early on. I name it Mini-Me, and head to the Viridian Forest to catch our first available Pokemon. After batting away at a few Caterpie and Weedle, we finally find a Pikachu, which I can later evolve for Lieutenant Surge's Raichu. I catch Pikachu, and of course, I name it Lieutenant Surge. I arrive at Brock's and take on the first gym leader. Mini Me takes Geodude out with just one Vine Whip, then destroys Onyx with a few more, earning me the Boulder Badge. Okay, this is the only rival battle I'm going to include in this run because, well, one, the others are super uneventful, but also, B, our rival Fool took us to task five times before I could get across Nugget Bridge, even at a level advantage. I can't take him down with all the silly mistakes I keep making. Anyway, I finally defeat Fool and decide to face off against Misty. Lieutenant Surge takes out Staryu, and Mini-Me defeats Starmie, earning me the Cascade Badge. This will be the last time I use my starter in a gym battle. Next, I head north of Cerulean City to find what? An Abra already? Okay, let me just put it to sleep, and I killed it. But that's okay, because I immediately find another Abra, and put it to sleep, and I killed it. Mini-Me is just too powerful to catch Abra at this point, so I catch an Oddish first and name it Erica. I deposit Mini-Me in the PC, as I won't be needing them anymore. I train Erica up until she can use Sleep Powder, and try to go after an Abra. But I soon realize that these things are fast and slippery. I mean, I can't lay a single Sleep Powder on these guys. What? Erica is evolving! That should be fast enough. I try my luck again, this time with a zoom and gloom rather than a sluggish oddish, and I'm sorry, I won't let that happen again. Anyway, I catch an Abra and name it Sabrina. Up next is Lieutenant Surge, who absolutely wrecks me on my first go-through. His Raichu's double team is too strong, and I just can't land a shot. I try again, and this time I know what to look for. I take the aggressive route, and it pays off. Erica takes out Voltorb with a couple nicely timed bullet seeds, and Pikachu goes down to a few absorbs. Lieutenant Surge can only get two double teams off for his Raichu before Sabrina bodies him with Psybeam, winning me the Thunder Badge. I head to Rock Tunnel for our next available Pokemon, Onyx. We catch one and name it Brock. West of Lavender Town, we encounter a Growlithe, quickly catch it and name it, you guessed it, Blaine. Erica's gym is up and Blaine makes quick work of her grass types. Victory Bell goes down to a few embers despite its attempt to heal with a Super Potion. Tangela takes down Blaine, so it's up to Sabrina to carry us through. Three more Psybeams, and Tangela and Vileplume also go down, winning us the Rainbow Badge. What? Brock is evolving? Oops. I guess I forgot that I made evolutions easier in this run for some reason. Oh well. I can't use Brock anymore, as he is no longer the Pokemon of a Kanto gym leader. I give Pikachu a Thunderstone, and what? Lieutenant Surge is evolving! Nice. I head south of Lavender Town to get the Super Rod from the Fishing Guru in order to catch a Staryu. I then head to Vermilion City to find said Staryu. It's at this point that you're probably thinking to yourself, But William, you can't catch Staryu in Pokemon Fire Red. It's version exclusive to leave green. Well, you'd be right about that. But that doesn't stop me from trying to find one for 15 solid minutes before Googling that for myself. So I save the game and begin the biggest mistake of this entire run. I spend the next two hours of my fleeting life playing all the way through Pokemon Leaf Green to the point I'd achieved in Fire Red. Then I finally catch that Staryu, name it Misty, head to the training center, and realize that I can't actually trade anything between these two games with my current setup.
<sighs> so I go back to Fire Red and Forge Ahead. I still have two more Pokemon to fill in my team anyway. I give Erica a Leaf Stone and what? Erica's evolving. Sweet. I find a Rhyhorn in the Safari Zone, catch it, and name it, that's right, Giovanni. I catch a Gyarados so I can teach it Surf, and name it, Lance. I give Blaine a Firestone, and what? Blaine is evolving! So cool! I take on Sabrina, and Blaine is just too much for her to handle. He takes out her first Kadabra with a bite and an aerial ice. Mr. Mime goes down to two more bites, and Venomoth tanks it to Flame Wheel. Alakazam presents an actual threat to me, so I break the second rule and give Blaine a freshwater mid-battle. <sighs> Sorry. One more bite, and I have the Marsh Badge. Next up is Koga, and he's, well, kind of a pushover at this point. I bring out my Alakazam and destroy him with psychic move after move, earning us the Soul Badge. I then head to the Burnt Mansion on Cinnabar Island to find the last member of our team. Coughing! I catch one, and name it, say it with me now, Koga. What? Koga's evolving! Eh, I wish it was a Starmie. I face off against Blaine, and this is where the real teamwork begins. Giovanni makes quick work of Growlithe with Dig, but isn't fast enough to avoid several fire blasts from Arcanine, who takes Giovanni out. Then the team starts to put in work. Sabrina weakens Arcanine so much that it has to heal. This gives me the opportunity to poison it badly with Koga's Toxic, dooming Arcanine altogether. I send out Blaine to make quick work of the rest of Blaine's team. Is this name scheme getting too confusing? Oh well. It's Giovanni's turn, and he doesn't stand a chance. Erica and Sabrina take turns one-shotting his entire team with grass and psychic-type moves. It's actually pretty brutal with a full 9-level disadvantage in the last matchup. I finally reach the Elite Four and decide to take them on without any extra training in Victory Road because I'm a cocky little idiot. Even though I can easily make it through the first half of Lorelei's team, I'm immediately thrown back by her Lapras. After training everyone on my team to at least level 50, I feel like I'm finally ready to take on the Elite Four, uh, for real this time. Lieutenant Surge takes out the first four members of Lorelei's team before Jinx comes in and nearly destroys me. I can't even get Koga to drop a Toxic because this stupid Pokemon won't stop kissing him. I finally get lucky enough with Sabrina and a couple Psychics, defeating Lorelei. Up next is Bruno. Erica takes out his first Onyx, and Koga is out to take on Hitmonchan. Koga resists fighting as a poison type, and takes out Hitmonchan without too much trouble. Blaine takes out Hitmonlee with one good aerial ace, and Machop goes down to three more. Finally, Bruno's last Onyx goes down to Erica. Agatha hits the floor hard with her first Gengar. Blaine trades blows with it before they both go down in the same turn with a spare poison. Next, Lieutenant Surge makes quick work of Agatha's Golbat with two Thunderbolts. Arbok is out, so I send out Sabrina for a quick Psychic. Gengar's up next, so I foolishly try to poison a poison type, only to have a nightmare set in. Somehow, Giovanni wakes up from his night terrors to throw a huge rock blast at Gengar, sending it to its knees. Last up is Haunter, who is hoist on his own petard by an unnecessary curse. Now we have Lance, the trainer I'm most worried about. His first Gyarados goes down to Lieutenant Surge's Thunderbolt, and his first Dragonair takes two blizzards directly to the face from Giovanni. I nearly take down the second one when Giovanni goes down. I was really hoping to save a blizzard for Dragonite, but we'll have to think of something else. Lieutenant Surge can take a hit from Hyper Beam, but I use his recharge period to ensure a successful Toxic from Koga. Sabrina goes in and quickly delivers the final blow to Lance's Dragonite. Blaine trades blows with his Aerodactyl before eventually going down. Erica's out and immediately takes a huge wing attack hit, but Sleep Powder is effective and one Petal Dance will win us the battle. It's time for the final battle. Pidgeot goes down to Lieutenant Surge and his Thunderbolt. Shocker. Then Rhydon goes down to Sabrina. Again, big surprise. Alakazam goes down to Blaine's Bite, and Gyarados goes down to, yet again, the military maniac himself, Lieutenant Surge. Executor eventually succumbs to Koga, surprisingly enough. Fortunately for me, Executor doesn't have any psychic-type moves. Charizard goes down to one quick rock blast from Giovanni, and that's the game. I really had a lot of fun experimenting with this team. I plan on attempting the challenge again with each generation. Let me know in the comments how you think I could make it harder for myself. Maybe I could force myself to use just the moveset of the Gym Leader's Pokemon. Or I could... I don't know. I'd love to read your suggestions. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video and you haven't already, go ahead and hit that like button and subscribe for more videos. It really helps out the channel.
Thanks again, and I'll see you next time in the Johto region.